assalamu alaikum students uh, welcome to a new lecture of engineering drawing and graphics and uh, in this lecture we will talk about threads and fasteners and as we already discussed that uh, a lot of mechanical systems are uh, made of different components and to help those components together um, we need threads and fasteners and basically we talked about that how different uh, mechanical systems are assemblies of different parts so how do we assemble these different parts we take the help of different type of threads and uh, fasteners and in today's lecture we will be talking about different fastening methods different type of threads and the uh, basic nomenclature that we use for these threads uh, and fasteners to represent them on a drawing sheet or uh, on a the drawing so uh, let's move forward and see how uh, we represent these threads and fasteners so today uh, our lecture objectives are uh, to see how what are the uh, assemblies and the type of assemblies uh, then we will talk about the fasteners what is the difference between bolt screws and studs uh, what is a basic thread nomenclature and the different ways of representing a thread on a drawing Uh, and then we will talk about the two standards the most common standards one is the matrix screw screw threads and the other one is the unified inch screw thread thread these are the two common uh, thread standards that are in use so these are our lecture objectives so uh, joining of materials as we already discussed that uh, different parts different mechanical parts or machines that you see in your daily life uh, is the assembly of different components so a joining is the act or process of uh, putting or bringing things together to make them continuous or to form a unit and uh, as it applies to fabrication uh, joining is the process of attaching one component structure element part to create an assembly as we already said we are the assembly of component parts or elements is required to perform functions that are needed or desired and that cannot be achieved by simple component or element alone for example as we discussed in class that uh, if we look at engine the internal combustion engine so it is not a single part it is the assembly of different components and those components are held together by different fasteners and uh, they act relative to each other to make the engine work so uh, if you take an example of a simple ic engine then it is a uh, assembly of different components that what relative to each other to uh, give us power that is desired so engineering applications are most com cons mostly consisted of or consisted of assemblies as we already discussed time and time again so what is an assembly an assembly is a collection of manufacturing parts uh, manufactured parts brought together by joining to perform one or more than primary functions and there are three types three major type of assembly one is the structural assembly uh, mechanical assembly and electrical assemblies and in the next slide we will see that uh, what is the difference between structural assembly uh, mechanical assembly and the electrical assemblies so uh, by structural assemblies uh, structural assemblies are basically the buildings the bridges and the dams in buildings you see that we use different type of bricks uh, different type of joining material with the help of cement and crush and uh, uh, like the bars uh, the iron bars that we use to form a composite material and then uh, we use them all together to form a building similarly we use different type of uh, bridges and in bridges we do use also the steel structure the roads all are all, all uh, came come together to form a bridge and then the dams uh, similarly these are the structure assemblies and the primary function is to carry load uh, that is static or dynamic or both for example in buildings mostly the load is static in bridges the load the load is both static and dynamic and in dams uh, depending on the uh, nature of the dam it can the load can be basically be both static and dynamic so these are the structure assemblies the type of structure assemblies and in mechanical assemblies uh, you are already familiar with our engines uh, gear trains linkages actuators these are all types of mechanical assemblies and the primary function is to create enable or permit some desired motion or series of motion through the interaction of properly positioned aligned 
or oriented components if we take this example of an engine then the most desired type of type of motion in the engine is within the piston uh, and Uh, cylinder if the piston moves inside the cylinder then it will gives us the power so that is the most desired type of motion that we expect from the engine uh, and similarly in gray, gray, uh, gear trains linkages and actuators so these are the type of the mechanical assemblies uh, that are formed by joining together different parts then these are there are electrical assemblies and their primary function is to create transmit process or store electromagnetic signal Uh, or start to perform some desired function for example the pcbs the motors the generators the power transformers that we see in our road our daily life are sm electrical assemblies and they are used to um, store or transmit or create a certain type of electromagnetic sense uh, signal or to perform a desired function and you are already familiar with motors generators and power transformer from your daily use so these are the type of the electrical assemblies then there are uh, joints and in joints we have two type of joints one is the non permanent joints these are the temporary joints mm, with the help of which we can disassemble uh, an assembly without damaging the assembly and the other type is the permanent uh, joint that don't allow the disassembly once it is applied if you uh, try to disassemble a permanent joint it will actually uh, damage your part so and these these are the two types and let's have a look that what are the types what are the what are the further classifications of these two parts so in permanent fastening uh, we have uh, actually welding is a type of a permanent fastening and in welding we join together two parts by uh, melting uh, welding rod uh, between the two joining parts with the help of electricity by giving heat with the uh, help of electricity or by uh, melting it with the help of the oxyacetylene uh, gas welding so this is uh, the type of the uh, uh, permanent joining then there is gluing and in gluing we actually apply a chemical to join two parts together and you are already familiar with this part and then we have riveting and rivets are basically uh, cylindrical type features with head like these and they are uh, basically uh, are permanent joints that that are used to permanently fasten two uh, or more than two components together then there are temporary fastenings and in temporary fasteners there are three types one is the bolts the studs and the screws and uh, you are already familiar uh, if you look at these pictures the, these are uh, abundantly used in our our daily life you can see them everywhere and in non threaded uh, fasteners that are temporary fasteners we have keys and pins and they are used uh, keys and pins are used to actually lock a gear onto a shaft with the help of uh, uh, small uh, components keys uh, or pins like these so these are also uh, temporary uh, fasteners and uh, with the help of these temporary fasteners we can actually disassemble the gear that is uh, assembled on a shaft so this then uh, what are threads uh, the main uh, application of thread is to uh, hold parts together if we look at this uh, diagram right here here the uh, the application of thread or the main uh, job of the thread right here is to hold these three parts uh, if this is part a part b and part c so the main um, application right here is to hold these three parts together so this is one application of the threads other application is to move parts relative to each other and uh, if we look at the example of the woodworking vise or it is also known as bench vise so this bench vise is used uh, to hold a job uh, if you are working on a so on a piece of wood and you would like to cut that wood so you would like to grab grab it between these two plates right here and uh, these two plates can be moved by rotating this shaft uh, in a certain uh, angular direction and with the help of that rotation these two plates will move uh, with the help of which you can actually grasp and loosen a part uh, in between these two plates you can hold the part between these two plates and work on it and when you are done with it you can actually loose that 
uh, that shaft and uh, it will come out of these two plates so uh, here the threads are used to move these two plates relative to each other then you will also uh, have seen these uh, uh, palm fruit pressing machine uh, actually they, they are used to make orange juice or pomegranate juice in our areas where you see a threaded shaft like this that is moved to actually um, press a fruit that is placed right here to uh, extract juice from it so here the threads are used to move apart so threads are used to hold parts together but they are also used to hold uh, to move parts relative to each other so what is the difference between bolt screw and uh, stud so a bolt uh, is made of two components it has a bolt and a nut so uh, a bolt is used uh, with the help of a and that uh, it is actually these two parts are held together with the help of a bolt and a nut right here so a bolt is used used in combination uh, of a nut so uh, this is the definition of a bolt that a bolt is never used alone it is used with the uh, with a nut and the nut and bolt together join two parts together if these are the two parts so this nut and bolt are joining them together then there are screws and in a screw uh, it is actually a single bolt without the nut the uh, nut uh, uh, the nut um, uh, the job of a nut is performed by internal threads that are placed right here uh, on which this screw is tightened so uh, here the uh, screw or if a bolt is used without a nut it is called a screw and the job of a nut is performed right here with the help of internal threads and then there is stud and in a stud uh, we use a shank uh, in which there are threads on both sides here you can see that there are threads and here the threads are there and it is used uh, with one nut so uh, if there are threads on both both sides of a cylinder then that is called a stud and uh, it is used both with the help of uh, internal threads are used to tighten these two parts together and also a nut is also used to uh, hold these two parts together so uh, in a stud we have threads on both sides and a nut is used to uh, hold the two parts together uh, here both internal threads are given on this side of this part and the nut is used to actually hold these two parts together so these are the differences between the bolts screws and studs then uh, the thread nomenclature that what are the different mm, the, what are the different nomenclatures what are the different features inside a thread so a uh, thread has a major diameter and the major diameter is between the two extremes that is called the crust of a uh, the crust of a thread between these two uh, extreme points we have the major diameter then there is a minor diameter that is between the two opposing troughs this is the trough of a thread then in between these two diameters we have a pitch diameter this is also called the effective dia this is also called the effective diameter and uh, with the help of uh, this effective diameter is actually very crucial because for a nut and bolt to uh, combine uh, to actually fasten uh, with ease then the pitch diameter of the both the nut and the bolt should be the same so it is also called the effective die because it helps in the fastening of the internal and external threads then this is the thread root and this angled uh, this angled portion right here is called the flank the distance between two troughs or between two crust right here is called the pitch uh, actually this extreme position is called the crust and this uh, right here is called the trough so the distance between the two troughs or the two crusts is called the pitch it is called the pitch of a uh, thread and similarly these nomenclatures are also applicable on an internal thread this right here is an in internal thread and here and there is also a flank angle 
the total angle that the that these two flanks make between each other and then the internal uh, have the internal threads have a pitch uh, the lead angle sorry the lead angle that is between the this point the center the point from where the thread starts and the uh, angle that the flank makes so this is called the lead angle and this is the angle uh, that the um, thread actually covers when it is given uh, one rotation so it is uh, yes this is called the lead angle and here this is the internal thread these are the uh, internal thread this is the external thread so this is external thread and this is the internal thread Here you can see the section lines. The section lines right here. That's uh, the uh, that's the uh, actual indication that this is the internal thread. Then there are different thread types, and the uh, main thread types that we use daily in our daily life are our metric and screw threads. They, they are actually used for very general use. And then uh, based on the shape of the threads, uh, we have square threads. Square threads are used to trans power transmission in our gear trains and uh, application like these. There are then, then acme threads and acme threads are stronger than square threads because of this slant uh, edge. They have a much more be load bearing capacity and they are used in the uh, lead screw of a the lathe machine. They are actually used in the lead screw of lathe machine and lathe machines are your uh, are present in your machine shop so you can actually have a look at the lathe the lead screw in the lathe machine and you will find the acme threads on them so uh, the other type is the buttress threads and they are designed to hold uh, heavy forces in one direction because of their angle because they are angled like this so they are designed to hold Mm, if they are angled like this then they will be designed to uh, bear a load in this direction only so they are used to actually uh, in truck jack or in car jacks where we use uh, this certain type of threads buttress threads to actually lift a tr truck or a car or a vehicle and then hold it in a, a certain position to change tires and work uh, mechanically on it so that's why we use buttress threads in which we and the load is applied in one direction only uh, for example in the case of a jack so these are the different thread types then there is a different thread representation whenever we represent a thread on a drawing so there are three representation one is detailed the other is schematic the other is simplified so let's have a look at them uh, here this is the detailed representation uh, of a thread and uh, by using the slant lines by slanting lines we use these angled lines these angled lines right here they are used one is a dark and the other is a relatively thin or if you see the uh, line representing the trough right here sorry the crust right here is a thick line and the line re uh, representing the trough right here is a thin line so this is the thick line thick line for the crust and thin line for the trough so uh, this is the uh, detailed representation of an external thread and here this is the internal thread and here again the section lines are drawn that shows that this is the internal geometry that is being shown of a thread then uh, the roots and crust are drawn in sharp V's as you can see right here the root and crust are uh, shown right here if we magnify it this is the uh, crust right here it is then there is the root that we call the trough so they are represented as sharp V's then the angle is uh, 60 degree the angle is also represented here the flank angle the pitches <coughs> The pitch is also represented as you can see. Then the other is the schematic representation. And in schematic representation, you do not know there is no such representation like this. But we use uh, thin and thick lines. 
and we use uh, alternate long lines and short lines for representing uh, crusts and the roots of the thread and these are the long lines they are talking about and these are the short thick lines these are the short thick lines that represent the uh, trough uh, right here or the root of the uh, thread and similarly these are the external threads and the internal threads this is the crust this is the root uh, that and then the pitch between the uh, the pitch is represented between the two crust lines then there is simplified representation and in simplified representation we use thick continuous line for representing the crust and thin continuous line for representing the root of the thread respectively and the pitch lies uh, halfway between these two lines and this is also called the thread turnout uh, thread turnout because the threads actually uh, ends right here so this is why it's this area is called the thread turnout and here this is the representation of an internal thread and this right here uh, representing the crust and this right here represent the root of the uh, threads then uh, we will talk about the representation of a thread that uh, how will we actually communicate the major dia the minor dia the pitch diameter that we saw in the nomenclature of the thread and the pitch of uh, a thread in different dimensions of a thread so we actually represent them with the help of a code and that code is specific for uh, every standard and the two main standards that we will talk about are the unified threads and the metric threads so let's talk about the unified threads uh, right here this shows um, the dimensioning of a internal thread and this shows the dimensioning of an external thread and this is the internal thread or a hole uh, that is where the threads are present so these are internal threads and this right here you will be familiar that this shows the uh, this represent a hole but this is a threaded hole and this uh, right here represent the uh, major diameter this right here represent the minor diameter and the pitch diameter lies between these two lines uh, and similarly this is the simplified representation of the thread and this right here represents the major diameter and this is the minor diameter and the pitch diameter lies in between these two so uh, as you can see there is also a certain code written about these two uh, and this if we start up with the internal threads if we start with the internal threads then this 1 by 2 represents the major diameter this represents this major diameter this arrow represents the depth of this and the depth of this hole that is 0.5 and this represents threads per inches and this is the uh, uh, the nature of the threads that is unified national course that uh, actually the threads are fine course or extra fine uh, this uh, two represents the thread form uh, b, rep b is representation of an internal thread and rh is for right hand threads and then these are the external threads and this is the uh, major diameter the threads per inch the thread form the thread class uh, 2a actually a, a is for external a is for external and b is for internal the alphabet A and B actually represents external and internal threads and this is also called as right hand. So uh, there are two types of uh, threads based on the handedness and if we, uh, if you place a thread uh, vertically, longitudinally, then if we see, you see the threads that are aligned as such, they are going upward on the right hand side. So this is called the right hand thread and if we, you see a thread, if you place it vertically and you see the threads aligned like this, then they are called the left hand threads. So this is the left hand thread, this is the right hand thread. So you can actually place it vertically, look at it and if they are aligned on the right side, then they are the right side threads and if they are aligned on the left side, then they are the left side, left hand threads. So let's look at uh, in detail that watch what this code actually means. So for internal threads, and uh, this represents the major diameter, this 3 over 8, 
this symbol represents the threat depth and this actually gives us that how much deep is the threat uh, then this is the th threats per inch that this shows us the threat form or series UNF means Unified National Fine then there are threat class that is 3 uh, then uh, the external uh, or internal uh, for B B represents the internal uh, threats uh, LH represents the left handed threats and these threat classes the threat form actually gives us the internal diameter the, ex uh, the external uh, diameter sorry the major diameter this actually this threat form and series and the threat class gives us information about the uh, major diameter the minor diameter the pitch diameter and the pitch of a uh, screw or an internal thread so these are actually the different dimensions that are required but we actually represent these dimensions in the form of a code like this and now you see that what every element of that code means and we will be having a look uh, at certain tables in our class when we attend it physically and there i will uh, show you some tables where you will be seeing that how these different thread classes the thread form represents different type of major and minor and pitch diameters then there are uh, another uh, standards of threads and that is called the metric threads and in metric uh, metric threads uh, the m actually represents the uh, metric term that this is a metric thread the 6 represents the major diameter uh, this also represents uh, another variable this represent the thread class and this shows the left handedness of the threads this again shows the depth of the thread and this is for the external threading so for metric thread we also have a, a certain amount of a certain type of code that with the help of which we specify again the major diameter the minor diameter the pitch diameter and the uh, pitch of the thread so these uh, codes actually represent different uh, type of sizing of a thread and right here if we look at the metric coding so m actually for external threads m actually represents the metric form this is the major diameter this is the pitch of the thread and these are the tolerances clowns that uh, what is the uh, tolerance for the pitch diameter and what is the tolerance for the major diameter then there is the um, for internal threads this also represents m is for metric uh, 6 represents the major diameter 1 is the pitch of this thread and then there are the uh, tolerances class the 5h and the 6h actually represents the tolerance class and for the h right here the h alphabet with these two 5 and 6 represents the internal thread and for external threads we actually put g right here g alphabet to represent that this is the uh, external thread uh, code for an external thread and with the help of these codes we uh, again uh, get information about the major diameter minor diameter pitch diameter and information like this and we will be looking at some table in our classrooms in which i will tell you that how we use this uh, code to actually use the different tables to uh, get different uh, sizings for our class.